the five senses challenge dogs versus cats versus people before we start let's review the five senses that we use to interpret our world smell sight taste touch and hearing Let's start with the sense of smell, but before we do, here's a fun fact. The nose of every cat and every dog has a unique pattern. No two are alike. Just as every person has a unique fingerprint, every cat and dog has a unique nose print. When it comes to the sense of smell, the dog is pretty much hands down the winner. Let's go inside and see why. Inside the dog's nose is something called the olfactory recess. Olfactory means anything to do with smell. The olfactory recess is a complicated maze of tiny bones covered with a thin tissue with over 300 million smell receptors. If you took that olfactory recess and laid it out flat like a piece of paper, it would be about 160 square centimeters. Look at that compared to a person's olfactory center, a measly 7.5 square centimeters. That's why a dog's sense of smell can be between 1,000 and 10,000 times more sensitive than that of a human. Cats also have a superior sense of smell compared to humans, but still not as keen as a dog's. However, Cats may be better at telling the difference between different smells. Let's take a closer look now at how the nose of a dog works. When a dog sniffs, the scent comes in at the front of the nose. The dog can then breathe out through the slits on the side of the nose, allowing him to continue smelling if he needs to. The air that he's breathing out doesn't interfere with the air coming in. Dogs also have a structure at the base of the nasal cavity called Jacobson's organ. It's connected to the roof of the mouth around here. It has two sacs filled with fluid that allow a dog to smell and taste at the same time. Cats also have this organ, which you can see here in this drawing. Both dogs and cats use the organ to smell things called pheromones, a sort of scent chemical left by other animals. Some breeds of dogs, like the Bloodhound, are particularly good at picking up scents. They are such good scent trackers that evidence that they find can be used in a court of law. You may have seen a Bloodhound on TV, sniffing an article of clothing and then following a trail to find someone who matches the smell. Well, how does that work? Well, the average person sheds millions of dead skin cells a day, and those tiny bits of skin can fall by our feet while we're walking or end up on something that we touched like a sweater. If the bloodhound sniffs something with our scent on it, he can then follow our trail. A bloodhound's long ears and loose wrinkly skin can help him track an odor. That's because the loose wrinkly skin can track the scent and the long ears can scoop it from the ground up toward the dog's nose. Now let's look at the sense of sight. First, let's talk about the ability to see color. Here, we humans win. Both dogs and cats are colorblind when it comes to red and green. While humans see red and green, dogs and cats are only able to see yellowish colors, white, and various blues. Humans are also better at seeing detail, at least up close. Up close, dogs and cats don't have as sharp focus as humans. But when it comes to distance, dogs can detect movement at up to 200 feet away, even if the thing moving is as small as a mouse. I decided to see what that would look like to my eyes with a mouse that I made out of paper. Here's my mouse sitting on the sidewalk. 
Now I've moved further away, but you can still see him. He's a little speck. I've moved back more and I can barely see him. I definitely can't see him now. Definitely not now. And I really need binoculars. That's it. At that distance, and even this one, a dog can still detect the movement of a mouse. When it comes to night vision, dogs see four times better than humans. And cats can see light at eight times dimmer than a human. That can help with nighttime hunting. Pupils are the part of the eye right in the center. When it's dark out, pupils get bigger to let in more light, and when it's very bright out, the pupils get smaller. Cats' pupils can adjust very quickly, and that helps them to hunt when it's getting dark out. The sense of taste. Let's do a comparison of taste buds, those little bumps on our tongues that help us to taste the things we put in our mouth. Dogs have 1,700 taste buds on their tongue, and cats only have 400. But when it comes to people, we have 9,000. Remember that keen sense of smell that dogs have? Well, when it's time to eat, dogs use that sense of smell to help them decide what they like. When it comes to flavors, people can taste the following types, sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and savory. Well, it turns out that dogs can also taste all those kinds of flavors. Cats can taste all those flavors except for sweet. If you've ever seen a video of a cat enjoying an ice cream cone, it's not the sweetness he's enjoying as much as it is probably the fat or the texture or maybe even the fact that it's cool. The sense of touch. Sure, I can feel the cat's fur when I'm petting him and he can feel me petting him. Same with my dog. But when it comes to the sense of touch, it's really hard to compare a human to a cat or a dog. Why? Because of whiskers. Whiskers aren't just hairs. They're sensitive instruments that provide a lot of information. That's because there are nerves in the root of each whisker. Whiskers can sense vibrations in the air. When a dog or cat approaches an object, air currents get stirred up and bounce back, bringing information about the object's size and even its texture. Remember how the vision of both cats and dogs isn't so good close up? Whiskers can make up for that by acting sort of like feelers. This allows them to move more safely in the dark, and it explains why my dog always knows when I'm about to trip over him at night. In the wild, whiskers can help cats and dogs catch prey and avoid predators. Cats even have whiskers on the back of their front legs to help them keep track of prey that they've caught. Whiskers above the eyes help protect them the same way that eyelashes do. Whiskers also help cats with balance and with whether or not she can fit through a small passageway. If the whiskers don't fit, the cat won't fit. The sense of hearing. Both dogs and cats beat out people when it comes to the sense of hearing. Both of them can hear sounds above our range. They can hear it, but we can't. That's why a dog whistle can be heard by a dog, but not a human. And cats can hear in an even higher range than dogs. Here's a fun history fact. The dog's keen sense of hearing played an important role in the Vietnam War. Dogs could actually hear wind blowing through trip wires that were connected to explosives. They could then warn the soldiers of the danger before they stepped into the wires. Well, what is it about the ears of cats and dogs that make them so good at hearing? One thing is the shape of the ears, which funnels the sound into them. 
The other is the ability to move them. Dogs have 18 more muscles in their ears than humans, and cats have closer to 33 more, allowing for much more movement. Some of us can wiggle our ears, but we can't raise, lower, or turn them. And both dogs and cats can move their ears independently. Let's watch how that works in slow motion. There's that ear on the right going forward and backward, while the one on the left stays in the same position. This ability helps both dogs and cats target precisely where a noise is coming from. Well, I want to thank you for watching this program. I hope you learned something that you found interesting that you didn't know before. And if you're doing Read Squared, don't forget to put in your code AUGUSTFUN22. See you next time.